These are the top five GPTs that will help you 10X your productivity as a developer. GPT Store launched last month and there are thousands of GPTs in the store already. First of all, you need to be a ChatGPT Plus subscriber. It's $20 a month and it's so worth it because the output of GPT-4 versus the free GPT-3.5 is like comparing the intelligence of a six-year-old kid to a fully grown 30-year-old adult. It's also multimodal, so it's capable of analyzing text, images, and voice instead of just plain text. And with ChatGPT Plus, you also get access to these special GPTs that can boost your coding productivity. Now, before we get into the video, I have some exciting news for you all that we've put together an entirely free 20 minute webinar training designed to guide you in becoming a developer with AI. You're gonna learn how to enhance your efficiency and speed up your development process using tools like ChatGPT. And in this free training, we're gonna give you three innovative AI app concepts that you can build in under five minutes with the power of AI. So click on the sign up link in the description below and make sure you check out this free webinar. All right, let's get into these top five developer GPTs. Our first GPT is screenshot to code. And hence the name, this helps you write front end code from just a screenshot. So you can take a screenshot of literally any website you want. So to try this out, let's just take a screenshot of the YouTube homepage. So we'll just grab that and then we can upload it to the GPT here. Because remember, GPT-4 is multimodal, so you're able to give it input that's not just plain text. So we're gonna give it this image of the YouTube homepage, and then the prompt that we'll add will just say, build this using Tailwind CSS. And we'll just see what it gives us from this prompt. So it takes just maybe about a minute there, and it has given us this whole HTML code that we can use to create the layout of the screenshot that we gave it. It says this code provides a structure for a video streaming platform UI inspired by the inspired by the screenshot. It doesn't cover every detail, but it gives you a solid base to start from. And you can fill in the placeholder images with whatever images you want. But let's just take this and throw it right directly into a replit um, file. And if you're not familiar with replit, it's just basically an in-browser IDE. So we can just put our code in right here and see the output right away. We don't have to do any other setup. Okay. So I'm literally just going to copy this and paste it right here. We have an HTML, JavaScript and CSS environment template selected because this is just plain HTML that it gave us. And it uses Tailwind. If you look right up here in the scripts in the head, we can see that the Tailwind CDN script is linked right here. So that's how we're able to use this Tailwind styling that you can see here in the classes. So let's just run this. Look at that. Move myself over here a little bit <laughs> so you can see. So it gave us a nice little layout for this. Obviously, like it said, you know, this is just the base and you build up from here. But this is a nice little YouTube homepage clone that you could start from and create your own project. Screenshot to code is super useful because this could really help you with rapid prototyping. You can get an MVP built from design files much faster than before. This GPT could also be used to help teach beginner programmers how the structure for a different front end should be set up. And you could potentially even use this to help you build your own UI component library. The Code Copilot GPT is designed to help you with Python programming. This can help you with code review. Okay, it can review code you've written. You can get help with debugging from this GPT and it can even help to teach you Python programming best practices. So how does this work? Well, we have the GPT open right here and it has some example commands to start with. So we're just gonna start with the first one they have, slash start Python. And it tells us a little bit about Code Copilot and what you can do. So it's here to assist you with writing efficient, readable, reusable, and maintainable Python code. So this, it can help you with API documentation, writing new code snippets, whatever you need with Python, basically. So to get started with it, all we need to do is just share a specific Python coding challenge or some example code that we wanted to explain to us. So I have here a sample of Python web dev project. This is using the Django REST framework. And I'm just gonna take a code from a random file in this repository. And I'm going to 
give this to Code Copilot. I'm just gonna ask it to explain this code for me. That's all I'm gonna say. And I'll paste the code right there. Some of these you might notice it takes a little bit longer because it's using GPT-4, which is a much larger model and it's doing a much more advanced response for us. So we have to have a little bit longer of a wait time. So this one did give us a pretty detailed response. It's basically explaining to us that this code is for a class for a blog application um, that's being used to serialize post data to and from a JSON format. So this is for a Django REST API that needs to format data for the response. And then it breaks it down for us into really detailed pieces. So it tells us we have the imports at the beginning of our code, right? And then we define the class, constructs the API URL, we use our models, we have serializer metadata, and then finally, we have the method that takes the post object as input and returns the full API URL for the object. So if you tried to look at this just by yourself, it's obviously following REST API conventions, but you might miss something, or maybe you are not that familiar with Python, and now you read this and you're like, oh, I understand what's going on now with the Django Framework API. I know what this syntax means in this context. Code Copilot is an awesome tool for beginners. If you have trouble understanding snippets of code, you can input that into this GPT and it's gonna explain it for you. Find a bug in your code and you're not sure what to do? Code Copilot can help you figure out how to fix it. So go have fun with this one and see if you can test the limits of what this can do. Our next GPT is Ask the Code, and this one has a really interesting use case. Ask the Code is specifically designed to help you get an understanding of a GitHub repository. So all we have to do is provide a GitHub repository URL and we can ask about any aspect of the code in that repository and it's gonna explain to us what's going on and what we need to know, okay? So I came across this repository by Apple um, for their own project called ML Ferret. I have no idea what's going on in this repository. I see some animals, looks kind of interesting. So I'm just gonna copy the link to this repository and then in the GPT, I'm just gonna feed it this repository. The prompt will give it, I'll just say, explain what this repository is like I'm 12. So for this, we're gonna to have to authorize it to use our GitHub account, authorize. So this GPT just uses a specific plugin and we have to, all we're doing here is, uh, the reason we have to sign in with OAuth is just to give it permission to be able to communicate with this plugin so it can give us the response back that we want. So I'm just gonna allow that. So it tells us the GitHub repository ML Ferret is about a project called Ferret. Imagine the Ferret as a super smart robot that can understand and talk about anything you see in a picture. It can point out and describe things in the picture using words just like we do. This is really cool because it means Ferret can help computers understand pictures and text in a way that's never been done before. So you can see it's kind of using language here that's making this so simple that anybody could understand it because we asked it to talk to, explain it like I'm 12. So it's really making this super easy to understand. It says Ferret is really smart at pointing and talking about things in pictures. It learns from a huge collection of examples and it's tested on lots of different tasks. So basically this is an AI that has been trained on a large set of images so that it can identify items in new images that you give it. So this is pretty cool, but how could this be useful to us? Let's just ask, ask the code how, how can I use this myself? Check this out. It told us how we can install Ferret on your own computer and then how you can actually train it yourself. As long as you have the basic hardware requirements, you can train data on Apple's machine learning Ferret yourself. So now that we know what this is and how we could actually run it ourselves, let's take it one step further. Let's ask it, um, give me some projects I could build using this project. It actually gave us six different project ideas that we could build with this. Build a platform for artwork that gives historical context analysis around it. That'd be pretty cool. 
Develop an app for researchers and conservationists to upload images of animals and plants to identify the species. Build a smart home system. A game that players can upload pictures and Ferret will generate stories and quests based on the objects and the scenes it detects. That would be really cool. So I guess actually under each one of these subjects is two different app ideas that could be an educational tool or an accessibility enhancement. So if you are someone that has trouble thinking about what projects to build, like you know you want to build something but you don't know what you should build, literally 12 different AI project ideas that you could build using this Ask the Code GPT. There are so many things you could do with this Ask the Code GPT. You could use it to help you learn new open source projects and figure out where you might be able to make a contribution. You could find projects you could build yourself to add to your resume and increase your chances of landing your dream job. The opportunities with a tool like this are really endless. Next up, we have Flowbyte. And you can use this for front end prompts so that you don't have to write any code by yourself. We're here in Flowbyte. All we have to do is come up with a prompt that describes what we want it to build. So the prompt I'm gonna give it is, help me build a simple blog following the Vercel design system and following the Substack blog post structure in Tailwind CSS, tell it to use the CDN and JavaScript. So we thought, hey, it might be cool to build a simple little blog where we can put some posts out there. We know that we like the Vercel design system and the way that Substack blog posts are structured, so we're gonna tell it to copy those systems. And then we wanna use Tailwind CSS again, making sure that we use the CDN like we did before, so it's linked in the head, the script tag. So we can just paste this into Replit, and of course, wanna build this with JavaScript. All right, so it gave us the basic code structure that we're gonna need, and then it tells us a little bit about the code and the steps. It says, here's the basic HTML template that contains the header, the content area, and the footer. It's gonna be structured to resemble Substack's layout, like we told it. Then it's using Tailwind CSS CDN link in the head, like we specified for it to do. And then it's telling us that this is a basic responsive layout if we wanted to further customize the design to more closely match Vercel's aesthetics like we mentioned to it in the prompt or add more advanced stuff. It tells us how we can extend uh, on top of this to do that. So let's copy what they gave us and let's see what it looks like. We will get rid of what we have in here for the YouTube homepage and we'll just replace it with our blog website. So this looks like it's still missing some of the Tailwind styling. I feel like maybe this is not correctly importing the CDN like we did before. Let's just see if it can fix it for us. Let's see if it's smart enough to do it. No, I don't think, I don't think it's quite right on that piece of it. If I replace this with a better CDN link, yeah, then we're gonna get what we want and we're gonna see those flow byte components. So this one, we had to tweak it just a little bit, but it did give us a really nice layout to start with all of the HTML that we needed. And this is why it's still important as a developer to know your tools and know what tools you like to use so that you can recognize, recognize those small little mistakes with GPTs and just tweak them to get exactly what you want with the minimal amount of effort. Flowbyte has some similar use cases to screenshot to code with rapid prototyping and building a design system for your project. But it's based on a specific component library called Flowbyte. Not sponsored, but this library can help you generate a really pretty looking app in record time. Our final GPT is Designer GPT. So let's compare this with the last one because this one is similar, but it actually takes it one step ahead and does the deployment for you, which is pretty amazing that we could give this just one prompt and have actually a live functional site that people could really access and use. Deployment can be one of the most annoying pieces of web development, so having that taken care of for us by this GPT would be amazing. So let's try a personal blog with this one and see if it does better than Flowbyte. For the prompt, we'll say design a personal blog layout. Make it in the style of medium.com because that's a popular blog site. Set it up with eight sample blog posts with different titles. All right, let's see what we can do with this. Okay, it's like, here's the pieces that it's gonna structure it with. I'll now proceed to create the HTML code for this layout. Once it's ready, I'll send it to create the actual web page. Send it. <laughs> 
Okay, HTML is done. It's putting some actual JavaScript function in this one. Okay, code is done. It's now sending this to create a web page and it's gonna give us the link to view it. Okay, once again, it's gonna need us to give it permissions. It wants to talk to Replit this time so we can see our live project. So I'm just gonna confirm permissions for that. And our personal blog layout is now live. It says, if we encounter any issues or want to make adjustments, please let me know how I can assist you further. All right, let's try just clicking this link and see. Wow, this is pretty sweet. This is a live website right now. You could go to this URL and check this out. So this is a great starting point. Obviously you would have, you know, work to do with a little more styling and with these posts, you would want to make them like go to uh, the actual post when you click on it and all of that. But hey, Designer GPT did tell you that you can, it's happy to assist you further. So you could just ask it how to do that and it would give you the code and give you the steps and get it deployed for you. And literally without having to write any code, you could just type in, I wanna be able to click on the art of making coffee and see a page with the actual blog post. And just like that, you'd be able to have a place to host that blog on your live site. So this is pretty cool. We have a fully hosted web app from Designer GPT. Designer GPT would be a great tool to use to help you learn to write clean code for all of your project builds. It could also be really useful for creating your developer portfolio. Just give it all the information you want to include about yourself and it's going to get you up and running right away. All right, those are the top five GPTs that will help you 10X your productivity as a developer. Now, if you're ready to go a step further and learn how to build your own custom GPTs, don't forget we've created that complimentary webinar training that's gonna help you become an AI developer. In 20 minutes, you'll get three different cutting edge AI app ideas that you'll be able to build on your own in under five minutes. Thanks to leveraging tools like ChatGPT to streamline your development workflow. So click that registration link in the description and make sure you catch this training. So which one of these GPTs we tested out was your favorite? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you in another video.